to tell where to put the ball on the screen, how many numbers did you need? Two numbers. Now imagine that instead of a ball on a screen, there's a, there's a large string and there's an, you're an ant that's living on that string. It can only go this way or this way. How many numbers do you need to tell the position of the ant on this string? Think about it. Did you think about it? That's right, you need only one number, right? Because you can pick some point on the string and all you have to tell is how many steps to walk this way or this way, just one number and you're done. The number of numbers you need is just one. The number of numbers you needed to put the ball on a screen was two. So basically, this thing, right, the number of numbers you need to tell the position of something in that space is what we call the dimension of that space. So a screen is what we call two-dimensional, flat. Screens, tables, anything that's flat, to tell the position of something on it, we need two numbers. How far to go from this side, how far to go from that side, right? But in the case of a string, you need only one number. We call such spaces 1D or one-dimensional spaces. What do you think the dimensions of our universe is? How many numbers do we need to tell the position in our universe? Yeah, you probably got this right. We need, that's right, three numbers, right? Imagine you're a mosquito that's flying around. If you want to shoot that with a laser, which I a lot of times thought about, how many numbers do you need to locate the position of that mosquito? How far it is from one wall, how far it is from the other wall, but is that enough? How high it is also matters, right? So you need three numbers to locate the position in our universe and therefore our universe happens to be three-dimensional, uh, three spatial dimensions. So three-dimensional space is what we have in our universe. Now, why is it three? Why not some other number? Have you ever thought of that? What would a four-dimensional universe look like? When I read this in school, I was like always thinking about what would a four-dimensional world be like? Unfortunately, the answer that I got was from uh, the malls that they took me in these school excursions where there would be some cinema. They used to play like a 10-minute cinema that I had to watch. And in the beginning, it was fine. They told me 3D cinema and then they just gave me glasses and uh, things popped out of the screen. I was like, oh, that, that's 3D. That's reasonable. That's three-dimensional instead of it being on the screen. But then I went to like a few more standards higher, I think it was 9th or 10th, they started this whole 4D thing and I was like, wait, do they have 4D cinema? What is this? Then I go inside, they said 4D just means they're going to shake my chair. This was the guy at the entrance. I was like, okay, that doesn't sound very four-dimensional to me. And then very soon, I was already beginning to lose trust. And by the time I was in 11th or 12th, they started 5D. I think they were trying to sell to parents and kids wanted like more and more dimensions are there, I'll go. And I asked, what is this 5D cinema? All that meant was they would start pouring water on me and have something hit my, hit my leg as I'm watching the movie. They had completely not understood what dimensions are, these people who are running these theatres. So if you're curious about what a higher dimensional universe would look like, that is the wrong place to look at. If you're truly curious, I recommend a book. It's called Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions. It was written in 1884. So if you want to think about this question, but also have fun while doing it, read it. Yeah, it was written in 1884. Talk about being an up-to-date uh, syllabus over here. But to truly understand these higher dimensions, the best way to do that is to start from one dimension. So let's go sit with our ant prisoner that's on a string and begin our study of what I like to call 1D motion. Now let's enter the world of these ants that are prisoners to their string carrying loads around. You can see that all three of them are moving, but are they moving equally? Like the second one has more motion than the first one, the third one has even more motion than, sec than, than the second one. In fact, the first one is poorly leaving just now. So clearly, there's different amounts of motion that's happening. You can either be at rest or be moving, but even when you're moving, there are more than one ways to move. But what if you want to actually talk about this in a clear way? Here you are like, you know, hey, uh, this is moving more, that's moving less. It's so vague. And if this pisses you off, that's exactly what the world would have been if you were born like, I guess, a thousand years ago, maybe in the Stone Age, people would have been talking like this about how much motion is there. In fact, if you were in Flintstones and if you broke the speed limit, imagine the awkward conversation you would have with the traffic cop that catches you, right? Like, hey, uh, I think you went uh, faster than how much I think you should have gone. And you're like, how, how much should I have gone? I don't know, I think it just feels faster to me. And then it can just create these really awkward which conversations, which is exactly what the world was. Until, like Galileo was also equally pissed off and he was like, you know what guys, we should just have something very clear about this. He was like, let me, let me fix this. And what he says is that he was like, what if I take one single unit of time, something, I'll keep it fixed. And he picked his heartbeat because poor guy did not have uh, modern clocks and modern devices to measure time. He was like, you know what, I'm just going to stick to my pulse. And in one heartbeat, I'm going to see 
how much the position of each of these ants or whatever is moving changes. So what he would do, he said, was let's just take one heartbeat and look at how much the position of the first ant is changing. And in this case, let's say it, it, the first ant moves 10 steps in that one heartbeat. The second ant moves 20 steps. The third ant moves 30 steps in that single heartbeat. And he went, you know what? This is useful because now I can say the first ant's position changed by 10, the second by 20, which means that has twice the amount of motion right, than the first one. So just fixing this time, in this case his heartbeat, really, really helped. And he called this idea. He just called a bunch of people, I'm assuming, and said, you know what, people, from now on, if you want to measure how much motion is there, we'll just keep the time constant and then see how much the position changed in that amount of time. So this ant goes 20 steps in one heartbeat, and he called this something. This idea of how much the position changes per unit of time. He called it speed. And from then on, we've been able to actually have a way to precisely talk about how much motion is there. Right? So what is this speed thing? It's just how much the position changes in one unit of time. That can be a heartbeat, that unit of time, it can be a second, it can be an hour, it can be a day, it can be anything. So that's what he did. Sometimes you may hear this being called velocity. Speed, velocity, both of these you can use interchangeably for the next five minutes or 10 minutes, after which I'll tell you what the difference is. So, but if you're here, then I have an interesting and challenging question for you, which is, now that you understand this, what if you're actually feeling bad for the poor ant that's the first one that's going so slowly and leaving the screen? What if you want to make that ant move 10 times faster? Which line of code would you go and change? Now, if you're curious about what these lines of code are doing, in difference, all I did was just add a line and add an image of an ant. Other than that, it's pretty much the exact code you wrote in the last episode. So go and think about which line of code will you change and what will you make that line? Now, did you think about it? Because if you did, you will now know that speed, you may have known it before itself, ah, I know, understand faster, slower and all, why is this guy talking about it? You would have understood that already. But now you know something really precise. What do you know? Speed is just how much the position changes every unit of time. So if you go here to 20 line number 22, which is where the position of the ant number one is changing, right? Like x1 is just the position of the ant one, and that's becoming x1 plus one. What does that mean? That means that every time this draw loop runs, the x position of the ant increases by one. And then because that happens fast, you see it moving further and further. So what would the speed of the ant be in this world? That's right, it'll be one pixel per loop. Keeping the loop, because the loop is a unit of time here, right? Like, so one pixel per loop is the speed, and you want to make it 10 times. The word per here is just, you know, for every. So one pixel for every loop. So over here, you can make it like 10. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, you want to increase it? Let's watch this. He zooms past, leaving the other two in the dust to bite the dust. I kind of feel happy doing this. So now you know what speed really is, right? It's the amount of position change per unit of time. And with that, now I have some questions for you. I want you to discuss them for a couple of minutes with your team and your learning coach, each of them, and then move ahead. Are you ready? First question is, if I just get rid of like uh, these two other ant babies and then have just one, uh, this is hopefully what it would look like. And if I said, okay, so the ant baby is going at like three pixels every second, right? That's what it's going at. Then the question is, in eight seconds, let's say eight seconds have passed, how far do you think the ant will be? Great, did you think about it? Did you discuss it? So what is this speed really? Three pixels per second? That just means every second this ant covers three pixels. So in one second, three pixels, two seconds, six pixels, eight seconds is gonna be three into eight, that is 24 pixels. And that's the answer. So this is the purpose of defining speed because now you can very easily find out, oh, tell me the speed, tell me the time, I can just say, how far? What should be a change in position of the ant? And in this case, that's 24 pixels. The next question I have for you is something very similar. So let's say maybe like I make the speed like two pixels per second, right? So that's our ant baby now. So it's going at two pixels per second. And the ant started like, you know, somewhere. And it's now 30 pixels away from where it started, right? How much time would this take? So what did you see? You know that it's moving two pixels every second. And then now it's it started sometime, but now it is 30 pixels away. So how long should it have taken? If it travels two pixels in one second, two pixels in one second, two pixels in one second, how many two pixels do you need to get to 30, right? How many do you need? This is kind of what division was invented for. How many pieces can you break 30 into such that each piece is two? 
That's, that's kind of what division is. And that answer is 15. So every second you cover 2, in 15 seconds you'll cover 30. The answer is 15 seconds. Now I'm deliberately going a little bit deeper into what each of these answers are because I have one more question for you. And that is, um, let's now say that I'm not going to tell you what this is at all, uh, the speed. We don't know what the speed is. But you do know that the AND that started is now 40 pixels away, right? And it took 8 seconds for that to happen. So 40 pixels, it took 8 seconds, what's the speed? Did you think about it? Did you discuss it? So it covered 40 pixels, right? And it took 8 seconds. Then, now we're going to make an assumption that I'm going to put the same number here. It's not changing its speed in between. Then what should, it, what should have happened? 40 pixels took 8 seconds. So in 1 second, how much? How many pixels did it cover? It's kind of like unitary method. Your 40 pixels took like 8 seconds. You want to know how many pixels will take 1 second. That's what you want to find out. So what do you do here? Once again, this is what division was invented for, right? If 40 pixels took 8, then you divide 40 by 8. That's going to be 5. So every second, you'll be covering 5 pixels. Now, why does that make sense? 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 8 times will give you 40. So essentially, you found the speed, which is 5 pixels per second. So if I make this x equals x plus 5, which is the speed we found out, that's what happens. But now, what if I actually do something weird? What if I make this x equals x minus, say, 5 or 1 or whatever? What do you think is going to happen now? Did you discuss it with your team and the coach? So when you made x equals x plus 1, the position was changing, right? And it was moving towards that, that way. Let's see what happens if you make x equals x minus 1. Well, the ant's actually going backwards. It almost looks like it's moonwalking. Let's change the initial position. Let's maybe make it start all the way from 300. We can watch this beautiful post for longer uh, as, it's going, as it's going backwards. Did you predict that? Now, why does it make sense? It makes sense because at some point, the position is, is that. And now it's going backwards, it's going lesser and lesser and lesser every time the loop runs. If it's 100, if it's 300 in this case, it becomes 299, 298. To 97 and so on. Now the question that I have for you is the AND that was going forward, right, one pixel every second, and the AND that's going backwards, one pixel every second, do they have the same speeds? Yes, they do. Uh, both of them cover one pixel every second. The distance they cover is one pixel every second. But now I'm going to throw a question at you, which is, do they have the same velocities? Take a guess. It's okay if you don't know the answer. Did you think about it? No, they don't. They do not have the same velocities because basically velocity is different from speed and I'm going to tell you how. Velocity is when you care about direction. So speed is just how much distance is covered every second. But velocity is how much distance is covered in what direction. So the first ant has one pixel in that direction every second, forward every second. But the other ant has one pixel backwards every second. So these two are clearly different if you care about the direction, right? If you care about velocity. So velocity was when somebody said, you know what? Sometimes in life, I care about what direction things are happening, okay? You tell me a truck is going at a speed 40 kilometers per hour, I'm like, cool. But sometimes I care whether it's coming towards me or away from me because these two are totally different worlds. So when you care about direction, which we sometimes do, we invented something called velocity. And then we had it such that whenever we need direction, we also call it, we give the direction to it and call it velocity. There's a simple way we do this when it's like 1D motion. Everything's happening on a line. We say that has a plus 1 velocity. And this has a minus 1 velocity. If you made that the positive direction, plus 1 and minus 1, that will tell you that, hey, these two velocities are different. Now, I want you to think about one last thing. Think about a case where, can you think of a case where the speed of two things is the same, but the velocities are different? Do you think such a case exists? It's almost a trick question. That's right. Did you think about it? This case that you just saw is a case, right, where the speeds are the same, but the velocities are different. Now I have another question for you. What about the case where, do you think there's a possibility where the velocities are the same, but the speeds are different? Yeah? That's not possible because if, you're, if your velocities are the same, then definitely your speeds have to be the same. Right? Speed is always positive. Speed is just how much your distance, how much distance you covered in a, in a second. So if your velocity itself is the same, right, both your speed and direction have to be same, then your speeds obviously will be same. But like you saw earlier, the opposite is possible. The speed can be the same, but the velocity can be different in cases where the bodies are going, covering same distance in every unit of time, but in some two different directions. 
Now, these kind of quantities where you care about the direction, like velocity, we call those vectors. Whenever you care about direction, when the quantity has direction baked into it, we call it a vector. And when you don't care about the direction, like speed, for example, we call it a scalar. Like there are some examples of scalars, like time, temperature, examples of vectors, like force, things like that. We'll not give you too many spoilers right now. We'll do that later. But with this, you're actually ready to jump into your next station and build on your own with code to show that you understand velocities and speeds.